Hey everyone, it's me Anita and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be testing out my new embroidery machine. So I ended up getting a Baby Lock Flourish 2. Um, I decided to go with this machine because it was in my price range. I got this sewing machine from sewingmachinesplus.com and I got it for around $1,500. It comes with a six by 10 hoop and because it's a baby lock, I believe it is also made by Brother as well or they're very similar to each other. So I wanted to get a machine that I would be familiar with, I guess, because I have, literally all my machines are Brothers. Like that's all I use is Brother machines. So. I decided to go ahead and go with this machine. I'm really excited to use it because since it has a 6x10 embroidery hoop, um, that gives me a lot more options and allows me to play more with embroidery designs. So I'm super excited to test it out. I'm going to be setting it up tonight. This is my first time using it, so hopefully everything goes well. And I'm also testing out two new embroidery designs my husband digitized. So. I wanted to come up with some Mother's Day and Father's Day embroidery designs. Um, so I came up with a mom life and a dad life embroidery design. So basically I made it as like an SVG and then my husband digitized it for me. So we're going to test those designs out tonight and we're going to test this machine out. So let's just go ahead and let's get started and let's get this machine all set up. So here is a close up of the machine, it's definitely much bigger than the PE770 and the PE800 that I have over there. So basically what I need to do right now is just peel off all this tape because I haven't even done that yet. Okay, have that. There's another one down here. And then I believe there was two on here. I already took those ones off, but even like when you open up the machine, it looks basically identical to the PE-800. Hopefully it's as easy to use as the PE-800. Um, fingers crossed. So first thing I need to do is I need to fill my bobbin, get my embroidery designs uploaded, and get the machine threaded. So let's see how that goes. So I'm going to be using some of this bobbin thread. Um, I got this off Amazon. I was using like the Brother brand bobbin thread, but it actually has dramatically gone up in price. It was like $75 for like six little spo spools of thread, of bobbin thread, and I'm not about to pay $75 for some bobbin thread. So I got this off Amazon for I think like $10 for a black and a white one, and I haven't had any issues with that thread at all. I know some people suggest getting like the pre-wound bobbins. Personally, I just like to use these. Get a couple of these and then just pre-fill them so you have them. Okay, so I zoomed in for you guys. So I'm going to wind my bobbin. Um, it pretty much looks just like how I would wind my bobbin for a P800. Um, there's numbers for you to follow. There's a one, two, and then a three, and then a fourth step. So first step is, is going down with your thread, going up, and then you're going to come around over here. I don't think you guys can see it very well, so I do apologize. But you'll come around here, follow the directions that are on the, on the machine, which is really nice, and bring your thread over, and then I like to wrap the thread around the bobbin a few times. Actually, guys, before I even set up my bobbin, I need to set up, I guess, the machine. So it says select your language. Um, the carrier is going to move. It also does this on the P800. Now I can go ahead and press go on my machine, and then now my bobbin is going to wind. Okay, so once the bobbin like starts to slow down, that's how I know my bobbin is full. And there you have it, I have my bobbin. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my bobbin back in the bobbin case. And just like how you were able to wind your bobbin, there's directions too. So I try and make sure that the thread is always in my left hand. And then I place the bobbin into the bobbin case and just follow the directions or the little arrows snip off any extra thread. 
suitcase back on. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and upload my design. So I have it on a USB. And just like the P800, there is like this little design right here, basically the USB design. Click on that, or the USB button, I mean. Okay, and then I'm gonna use these arrows right down here, just like, literally, just like the P800. And I'm gonna find my design. I'm going to set the design, and if you need to adjust it, you can move it, you can resize it, you can rotate it. Basically, you can adjust it if you need to. I don't need to. It's fine the way it is. So I'm going to do end, end edit and press embroidery. And there you have it. You'll have all your steps, um, and it even shows you what step it's doing, which color it's doing. So just like the PE800. It's very, very similar, which I'm loving. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get my thread all set up. So I am doing a black t-shirt with the word mom is gonna be like in this animal print. So I'm gonna use, I believe, black thread for the outline of this. And then for the word life, I'm gonna use the white thread. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the black thread. So I ended up buying one of these little thread stands off of Amazon. I had one for my P800, it works well. It really helps prevent like the thread getting caught in the machine, so really recommend getting one of these. But let me now go ahead and move my camera so you guys can kind of see how I thread the machine. Okay, so there's like these little steps. There's a one, two, three is down here, four, and then a five, a six, and a seven. So let me zoom in. I'm gonna go ahead and go down one. I'm gonna wrap my thread around the machine, following the arrow, taking the thread all the way down to three and bringing it back up. Um, so there's like a little metal hook that you need to wrap the thread around. So for step number four, you're gonna bring the thread up and you're gonna wrap it around that little hook and then bring it right back down. And then I'll show you the fifth step. So I have my thread going up, I'm gonna wrap it around that little hook, bring it down as you can see, here's number six. There's like a little hook right here. I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to basically just wrap it around that hook. Just like that. And now I'm going to take it and put it through this little hook and then take it to number seven. Just like that. And then over here on the side, there is a little thread cutter. I'm going to go ahead and just trim off that little bit of thread, take my little lever, push it down, and then there you have it. The needle is threaded. I was having trouble at first, but then I noticed that the needle that came on the machine originally was curved and crooked, so I just switched out the needle and no issues with threading. So if you're, if you're not able to thread your machine or if you're having issues threading your machine, always double check the needle because if the needle is bent or damaged in any way, it will make it harder to thread the needle. Um, so definitely always, always check that out. So everything seems to be all set up on the machine. Threads threaded, got a full bobbin. The design is loaded. So for the mom, I'm gonna be doing this cheetah print. And then for the word life, I'm gonna be using just basic white thread. So now all I have to do is get the shirt hooped on the arm. Okay, so here is the six by 10 hoop. Um, the hoop definitely looks different than on the PE 800. So um, hopefully that's not too hard for me to learn. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it up and I'm gonna get some cutaway stabilizer. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm so used to working with a five by seven. I need to cut that bigger. Okay, wow, just barely, just barely made it. Okay, I'm gonna use my little grid and I'm gonna mark some center points. I like to use this basic air markers um, so they dissolve over time. Now I'm gonna use some temporary adhesive and just spray the cutaway stabilizer. The only thing I don't like about using this stuff is, is that it makes your mat, or not your mat, but your hoop get all grimy looking, and I don't like that, but it's whatever. You can just take some soap and water and clean it if you need to. 
Okay, now I have my shirt turned inside out. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it in half. Usually what I would do is I would use that same air marker on the shirt, but because this is a black shirt, I can't really use that marker. I would have to use chalk. So basically I'm just gonna fold the shirt in half and try and line it up the best that I can. So again, I have it turned inside out. I'm going to be placing the front, I guess, of the shirt down. So you need to make sure that you have your tag facing up, basically. Okay, again, you should have your tag face up. And now when I hoop the shirt, I'm going to make sure and open the shirt up. I'm also gonna make sure too that the front of the shirt stays stuck, I guess, to the stabilizer. But I'm just basically just gonna open up the shirt like that and then embroider the design on. So let's go ahead and take this to the machine now. There is directions on how to hoop your design. So you wanna make sure that this little lever is up. Okay, and then I'm just gonna slide this in and put the lever down. And then just double check and make sure that it is secure. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start embroidering and hopefully this design my husband digitized um, turns out okay. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Sound right, boy. Sound right, boy. Okay, guys, so I'm pausing my machine. So, this design is going to be a bean stitch design, and I was going to do the bean stitch in black, but now I feel like you can't really see the letters. So, to help kind of define each le letter and kind of make them pop a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and switch out the thread for white and do the bean stitch in white and let's see how that looks. So I'm actually gonna have to go back um, a few stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and just restart the whole process of doing the bean stitch and um, just press okay. And then all you have to do is press your needle on your foot and then press go and it will start where it needs to.
must say though, I am loving the machine so far. It stitched this out pretty quickly and super quietly too. The only thing though, I'm not sure if I'm digging the white outline or the white border and I'm not too sure about this fabric as well. It frayed a lot. I even used heat and bond too on the fabric and it's still frayed. So I'm gonna be looking for another cheetah leopard print. I did cut a little hole in the shirt when I was cutting off the stabilizer. So definitely Bella Canvas is great for HTV. I love Bella Canvas for HTV shirts. But when it comes to embroidery, it's like not the best because the shirts are very thin. I barely even cut the shirt and I ended up putting a hole in it. So, and also use a ballpoint needle. I totally forgot to switch out the needle for a ballpoint needle. Um, so I might switch it out and try it for the dad life shirt, but let me go ahead and get the dad life one started. So here is the dad one. Um, I'm still working on trying to figure out the best length for like these bean stitches, um, how much fabric you should leave. Because uh, it started to fray, so I don't understand. I'm using heat and bond light and the fabric is still fraying. So if you can comment down below and let me know something I could do to help prevent that. But definitely I need to leave more fabric along the edges. I did much better on this one. But this one I didn't do so well when cutting out the applique. Uh, the letters down here came out nice. The shirt did get caught, so there is a little bubbling right here. Um, but not too noticeable. But I definitely love how these turned out. There's some, tw some things we need to tweak on the design. And the machine, the Brother Lock Floors 2, really made stitching out these shirts a breeze. The machine's quiet. I'm in love with my new machine. I can't wait to get this PE770 going. I need to get a different USB for this machine, but I have some USBs coming in the mail tomorrow, so hopefully I'll be able to 
get this machine running, get my P800 going, and this one too going all at the same time. I plan on doing that tomorrow because I have a ton, a ton of t-shirts and bell bottoms that I'm making tomorrow for uh, like complete outfits. So I'll be running these three machines tomorrow, so make sure to keep a lookout for that video. But I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. It's already one o'clock in the morning right now, so I'm tired, I'm ready to go to bed. I have a ton of orders that I have to work on in the morning, so I'm just gonna end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed me testing out my machine for the first time. I'm gonna leave the link down below uh, if you guys are interested in this machine. I definitely, recommend this machine if you are trying to get a embroidery machine and you're trying to get the P800 I would just hold off spend three hundred dollars more because P800s are going for like twelve hundred right now on Amazon I got this for fifteen hundred so for three hundred bucks more you can get a six by ten hoop a much quieter machine and a much not much much faster but a faster machine too so I definitely recommend this machine so far um, again it's only my first time using this machine so we'll see how it does when I do like different shirts and stuff and baby blankets of so two of course so just stay tuned I have a ton of videos on this machine and of course there's still gonna be tons and tons of videos on my P800 and now I can even do like tutorials of my PE 770 once I get the hang of that machine too so there's a lot of content coming your way guys so if you haven't already make sure to subscribe hit that notification bell hit that like button so YouTube knows to share this video with others and comments down below if you have any suggestions on how to help prevent fraying when doing bean stitches because I need to figure it out <laughs> but anyways I will see you guys next time bye Ooh.